10. Jill Dando. Jill Dando was a British BBC television journalist and on-camera broadcaster. An unknown assailant shot her to death outside of her home on April 26, 1999. Jill Dando hosted the program Crime Watch, which coincidentally broadcasted information about unsolved crimes. After leaving the home of her boyfriend on the morning of April 26, she arrived at her own home. As she was opening her front door, an assailant grabbed her, wrestled her to the ground, and shot her once through the temple, killing her immediately. A neighbor observed a six-foot-tall white man rapidly leaving the vicinity after a year-long investigation. Police arrested a man with a criminal history of stalking and inappropriate sexual behavior named Barry George. Initially convicted and given a life sentence, the courts eventually dismissed the conviction on appeal. The courts retired George and acquitted him. A case has been made that Dando was murdered by someone with a Yugoslav or Serbian connection as revenge for a NATO bombing which killed 16 employees of a Serbian TV station. Jill had fronted a TV appeal for Kosovan Albanian refugees just weeks before her death, which is believed to have enraged Serb paramilitaries. Authorities have not made any subsequent arrests, and the case has gone silent since 2013. Number 9. Dorothy Jane Scott On the 27th of May, 1980, Dorothy Jane Scott attended a company meeting after dropping her son off at her parents' house. There was nothing unusual about the meeting, except for a colleague suddenly complaining of severe pain. Dorothy offered to take the colleague, Conrad Bostron, to the emergency room. Another colleague, Pam Head, accompanied them. Doctors established that Conrad had been bitten by a black widow spider and was given immediate treatment. He was discharged at 11 p.m. and Dorothy left the hospital to bring her car to the entrance. Pam saw the car leave the hospital parking lot, but Dorothy did not return to the hospital. Two hours Hours later, Pam notified the hospital security that Dorothy was missing and called Dorothy's parents. In the weeks and months that followed, police were informed that an unknown male had stalked Dorothy before her disappearance. Dorothy told a co-worker that the man had called her several times and mentioned events he could not have known about unless he had witnessed them. After Dorothy vanished, the man continued calling her house when the mother was there alone. When she answered the phone, the stalker would either ask for Dorothy or gleefully claim that he killed her. When Scott's father picked up the phone in 1984, the call ceased. In August 1984, Dorothy's remains were found buried underneath a dog in Anaheim Hills along the Santa Ana Canyon Road. After the discovery, the stalker called twice more asking for Dorothy. To date, Dorothy Stalker has never been found. Number 8. Kathleen Kalatsi. On November 2, 1974, 17-year-old Kathleen Kalatsi left a Cobbleskill bar and headed back to the sunny Cobbleskill campus. She had earlier declined a lift offered by her roommates, saying she would catch a ride with somebody else. The teenager's mother reported her missing the very next day. The tragic truth came to light when police found Kathleen's half-naked body in Richmondville nearly a month later. She had been stabbed multiple times with two different weapons. The only credible lead was a report of a girl resembling Kathleen getting into a yellow Volkswagen on the morning of her disappearance. The report was never substantiated. Over four decades later, investigators are no closer to finding Kathleen's murderer, despite interviewing more than 3,000 people and chasing down over a thousand potential leads. The police were never able to identify a suspect. Number 7. David Sneddon David Sneddon, a Mormon missionary studying Chinese and traveling as a tourist in the Yunnan province, was 24 years old when he disappeared in 2004. Local Chinese authorities asserted he had fallen into a popular canyon and drowned, but no body was ever located. His parents traveled to China and located several witnesses who credibly claimed that they had interacted with David long after he traversed the gorge and that he had been seen near the China Burma a border. For 12 years, the Sneddon family maintained they did not believe David was dead. In September 2016, Choi Sung Yong, the head of the South Korean abductees family union, said that he had information claiming that Sneddon is currently living in Pyongyang, the capital of North Korea. Allegedly, Sneddon is married to a Korean woman, has two children, and is an English teacher. Sung Yong maintains then, Korean leader Kim Jong Il issued Sneddon's kidnap to have him tutor his son, Kim Jong Un, in English. Sneddon was fluent in Korean, reportedly, a Korean woman in Beijing approached him, inquiring if he could tutor her children. North Korea has a history of abducting foreign nationals, including numerous Japanese couples who the country forced to remain in North Korea and tutor government officials in the Japanese language and culture. In 2016, a spokesperson for the North Korean Foreign Ministry vehemently denied the Sneddon kidnapping allegation. Number 6. The Yogurt Shop Murders On December 6, 1991, firefighters in the city of Austin responded to a suspected arson at a strip mall. The strip mall included a yogurt shop with the witty name, I can't believe it's yogurt. The firefighters managed to put out the blaze, but inside the yogurt shop were the bodies of four young women, Amy Ayers, Eliza Thomas, Jennifer Harbison, and her older sister Sarah. All victims were found naked, bound, and with gunshot wounds to their heads. At least
least one of the girls had been raped. The other three were so badly burned that further examination was almost impossible. Closure came tantalizingly close when four young men were arrested in Texas and West Virginia in October 1999. Robert Bruce Springsteen and Michael James Scott were the only two to go to trial, and both men were convicted on flimsy DNA evidence. In 2001, Springsteen was sentenced to death. Five years later, the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals overturned Springsteen's conviction. This was due in part to the case of Detector Hector Polanco, who was investigated for coercing 13 false confessions. Following a negative DNA test in 2008, Springsteen and Scott were both released in 2009. Number 5. Lisa Al. On January 20th, 1982, 19-year-old hairdresser Lisa Al finished her shift at the Susan Beer Salon in Kailua, telling co-workers she was headed to My Kiki Key Key to see her boyfriend, Doug Holmes, at her sister's apartment. She stopped to buy some poke on the way, headed to the apartment, spent some time there, and drove home to Kailua. She never arrived, and the next day, O's parents called Holmes to see if he had heard from their daughter. He retraced her trip and found O's car parked on a highway shoulder. The driver's side window was partially rolled down, and while her purse was still in the car, her driver's license was missing. This suggested to authorities that a police officer was involved. He pulled O over, asked for her license, and then possibly attacked and abducted her. An island-wide search lasted for 10 days when O's body was found in a ravine. A police officer who lived near O and for whom a sexual harassment charge had been filed was arrested, but prosecutors lacked evidence to pursue an indictment. A newspaper delivery driver later reported that about 2.30 a.m., the night of O's disappearance, she saw a man drive by with a female passenger who appeared unconscious. O's final hours and the circumstances of her death remain a mystery. Number 4. The Love Me Tender Murders On the night of December 28, 1956, teenage sisters Patricia and Barbara Grimes went to a local Chicago movie theater to see a film, Love Me Tender. When they never returned home, a frantic search ensued. Although the police received a number of tips, none panned out, and a month later, the girls' bodies were discovered by the side of a nearby road. Unfortunately, their bodies yielded so few clues, investigators weren't even able to settle on a time or cause of death. Nevertheless, several suspects emerged and the most promising of whom was a teenage boy who actually confessed to killing the girls. However, since his confession was elicited illegally through a lie detector test that the law said the boy wasn't old enough to be subjected to, the boy couldn't be tried for the crime. Whether or not the boy was the killer, the case remains unsolved to this day. Number 3. The Dardeen Family On November 19th, police went to the trailer of Keith Dardeen, who had failed to show up for work. Keith was not one to skip work, so his supervisor first called Keith's parents when they failed to provide any information about Keith's whereabouts. Whereabouts, the police were notified. Inside the trailer, the police found a veritable house of horrors. Keith's wife, Ruby Elaine Dardine, was found dead alongside the couple's three-year-old son, Peter. Both had been beaten to death with a baseball bat that had been a birthday present for Peter. More horrific still was the fact that Elaine had been pregnant at the time of her death. The killer, or killers, had beaten Elaine so badly that she had gone into labor midway through the attack. The newborn girl was pulled into the world and then summarily beaten to death. Keith's body would not be found until the next day. His corpse, which was found in a nearby field, showed that Keith had been shot three times. His penis had also been removed. Given the absolute horror of the crime scene, locals began to blame Satanists for the crime. Others suggested that drug addicts had killed the Dardine family in order to hawk their possessions for drug money. Both of these suspicions were quickly ruled out as there was no evidence of ritual activity. A VCR and a camera were left untouched at the crime scene. For a time, Illinois investigators suspected a serial killer, Angel Maturino Resendiz, a Mexican-born and Texas-based transient. Another Texas serial killer, Tommy Lynn Sells, confessed to the crime in 2000, but over the years, his story repeatedly changed. Sells was executed in 2014. Number 2. Sandra Williams On the morning of September 11, 1980, the body of Williams, 20 years old, was found in a cul-de-sac in Mobile, with police quickly ruling the case of death to be murder by stabbing. There was no sign of struggle in her residence, although the door had been left open. It was a mysterious death, which led to a fruitless investigation, at least at first. In the 2010s, Mobile police took another look at Williams' case, re-interviewing as many witnesses as they could find, and using technology not at their disposal in 1980 to examine evidence. DNA led to a secret indictment of Alvin Ray Allen, arrested on a murder charge in 2019 after a standoff with police and the involvement of a SWAT team. In 2020, Williams' court appearance resulted in a hung jury and a mistrial, making this murder case cold once more. Number 1. Patrick Alford Patrick Alford did not have the idyllic childhood some are lucky enough to have experienced. He had been taken away from his mother, Jennifer Rodriguez, after she was arrested for 
for shoplifting and found to be dependent on drugs. He was then placed with a foster mother, Labrada Morin, in Brooklyn's Starrett City. Three weeks after moving in with Morin, the seven-year-old Alfred was helping her carry heavy trash bags downstairs when her cell phone rang. Morin briefly left the boy downstairs when she went to take the call. Upon returning, she found he had vanished. Fully convinced that his biological mother had abducted him, the authorities arrested Jennifer Rodriguez and only released her after she had spent time in a prison cell and passed a polygraph test. In the years that followed, the police followed up on every lead they could find and searched thousands of apartments in the Starrett City area. A search of a nearby creek and interviews with Patrick's teachers and bus drivers proved fruitless. Jennifer Rodriguez has since brought a lawsuit against Morin and the children's services on the grounds that they failed to protect Patrick.